came up pretty good. So I got the filler primer on there. I let that body filler dry, dry uh, two days. I'm going to let this dry. This will probably be a couple of two or three days before I can get back at it. So I'll sand that. And then it should be ready to start painting. I got to get it hung from my cherry picker. There was a nasty weld over here. Right, right here was a nasty weld and I fixed that too. It just looked bad so I took care of it. It was just, you know, the rest of the welds on the bike, you know, they look pretty good. And you can see splatter and stuff from the original factory welds, you know, like right here and right here. And I'm just going to leave that because that's the way it originally was. But this really, and this is behind the splash pan. Now put peg bolts on here, splash pan bolts, or the skid pan bolts here and here, and up here and goes right down under all that. So you don't see it anyway, and the engine's, uh, you know, hanging out over here. But I just wanted to fix it up anyway. Ready to paint. So I finished up the body work on the front of the frame here and it actually came out pretty darn nice. I don't see any pits or marks or anything and I sanded through the primer in a lot of spots to where it was just bare other than the pits. You could see the pits were the filler and the primer. So there's not going to be a big, you know, won't be a thick filler or anything on there, just enough to fill the pits. So I had to reprime it because like I say I sanded through to the bare metal and uh, just kind of hung it with some wire. Today I'm going to attempt to uh, paint the motorcycle frame. It's been about three weeks since I touched it. I've been cleaning and painting up the inside of my dad's house for him and we've had bitter cold weather. Well today it's supposed to touch 50 so I thought I'd give this a uh, spray. I just got it, uh, gave it a light sanding, blew it off, wiped it down with a tack cloth, and uh, tubing is kind of a pain to paint, so it may take a while, and I'm not going to video it because uh, I don't want to get over spray on the camera. But anyway, I'm going to get started here. I don't know what I've talked about in the past. Like I said, it's been three weeks since I did anything on this, so I'm going to get started here. And again, I'm just using my little door jam gun, and it's the acrylic enamel, the hardener, the smoothie. And I'm using a uh, medium reducer because tubing, like I say, is a little more difficult to paint. And I like the reducer, the paint to cure a little slower when I'm painting tubing. All right, I got the tack coat on. I'll let that dry for about 10 or 15 minutes, and I'll go around and put a final coat on it. It looks really good looks like you know i got a tubing's kind of like i say hard to paint so i gotta kind of go around it and make sure i didn't uh miss any spots looks pretty good so i'll let it set up and i'll get the spray gun refilled and get it ready for a second coat that was the second coat the paint came out really really nice Let it dry for a few days. I still got uh, some things to wrap up at my dad's house. I got to paint a couple of closets and uh, put a couple bedrooms back together after I shampoo the carpet or get, clean the carpeting. I painted every room in my dad's house, including inside the closets, and uh, removed all the furniture from every room, cleaned all the carpets, got a professional... Uh, carpet cleaner from a friend of mine that owns uh, Michigan Cleaning Systems in uh, Warren. So the carpeting came up looking like new on my dad's house. But I got, I, you know, I had to move furniture from one room to another, move it around. and So I got two bedrooms left to clean and I do that this early this week and uh, then his house will be done and I can start reassembling this probably by next weekend. Really, really looks good. I turned the heat up to 72 in the garage here. It's about 50 degrees out, so it was a nice day to paint. 
like I say tubing you know because you're spraying all the way around in different angles and you can get over spray easily on tubing you know if you're spraying here and it tacks up when you're spraying here this side looks over spray so that's why I just use a slower dry reducer and and uh, put it on a little heavier and that way it uh, you don't get that overspray. I don't like buffing paint so the key to not having to buff paint is put it on so you don't have to buff it. But that tube came out really nice. That was the old rusty pitted up tube as you remember. Well, as I was cleaning out my dad's house, I found a bunch of old manuals that I had, and uh, this is 1946 to 1956. And they're interesting because back in this era, you rebuilt everything on a car. Everything was rebuildable by anyone, you know, that had some tools to get one of these manuals and fix their car. Pretty interesting. And, I, you know, I can do a separate video on these, but I just thought I would uh, just kind of show quickie. This is a Bendix Treadle Vac power brake booster disassembled. That's the master cylinder, the power booster. They're pretty easy to rebuild. I've rebuilt numerous ones. Um, they're showing a steering gear over here being serviced, an oil pump. Or actually, that's probably the Power, uh, power steering pump. A lot of them were vein pumps in that era. The torque converter when you could take them apart. The planetary gears and this is probably what well, it says it's a Dynaflow. So it's probably a Buick. But it just, you know, an interesting, there's a cutaway of a power flight. Just kind of a neat Buick V8, Nailhead V8. So it's just, uh, look, they even show the torque uh, pattern for a flathead. Capacities, datas, and stuff DeSoto, Dodge, Hudson. Probably a lot of people don't even remember Hudson cars. Kaiser Frazier. Cold War Motors has a Frazier. 49 Frazier that's his everyday beater, summer beater. So it's just kind of interesting, you know, when you go through all these old manuals to see what's in them. So I just thought I'd share a little bit of this. I don't even remember how long ago I got these or where. Probably a swap meet back in the day, but paid $4 for, for this one. And this one is a, uh, let's see if it says the year it covers. That page, oh, 52 through 59 models. So yeah, well, there's a, Chrysler Hemi. So it's just, you know, again, just showing you how to do rebuilding the power steering gear. Again, this is the era when backyard mechanics could do all that. And one final look at the frame before I wrap up the video. It, the paint is like glass on there. It just really, really came out nice. I'm super happy with it. I find if I paint outdoors like I did, I get less, less crap in the paint. Less, you know, I don't get, I didn't get anything in the paint. If it's, if it's summertime, you get bugs, so you can't really paint outdoors in the summer. And uh, you, you know, and the trees are pollinating or. So then you got to paint inside, but if I can paint outdoors this time of year, this is my preferred time to paint when there's no bugs, no pollen, no that stuff in the air. You can get some really nice paint jobs outdoors. Backyard shade tree paint.
paint jobs. But yeah, it came out really super duper nice. You know, it saves just covering everything up in the garage and it just does a lot. It takes longer to cover and prep the garage if I paint in here than what it does to do the whole paint job. So that's why I just try and you know, I can roll it outside and shoot the paint on and it comes out magnificent. Look at that, just gleams. You can see the camera reflection and my reflection in it like a mirror. Yeah, nice, came out nice. I'm super happy with it. I think this motorcycle is going to look better than it did when it was brand new. Hit the like button if you enjoyed my video. If you enjoy my channel, please subscribe and thank you for watching.